<laughs> Hello my Genomi friends, I'm Genomi maker Adam Ratliff and today we're going to be talking about binding. Uh, binding is my arch nemesis when it comes to quilting. I just, there's something about binding and the process that I just don't want to do and I think it's usually I've always bound using my uh, the hand stitching to the back and I just don't like the handwork part of it. Uh, these are all quilts that I've done in the past six years. This is the third quilt that came off of my long arm in 2016. Still not bound. Uh, if they are going out to someone, if they're getting hung on a wall, I get binding on them. If not, they end up going into a pile and then binding doesn't get on there. Um, so when I got my Genomi M7, I was talking to Genomi Kelly. She does stuff. You might know her from the long arm side. And she was telling me, oh, you have to do this zigzag stitch. I love it. She showed me a picture and I was like, I don't understand. So I got my first quilt and um, you know, a week after I got the machine, I did a zigzag stitch. I'll show you this up close. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so easy, it's so fast, and it's done. So now everything is in line to get bound because it's easy, fast, and it's done. Um, so I figured I might as well show this technique with you. Um, we are going to be using a zigzag stitch. So we're gonna use, um, on the M7, it is number 11. Um, I don't know if that's the same on all the machines, but it is the multi zigzag stitch. You'll see the icon for it whenever we get close. But basically it looks like a triple, we call it the triple stitch zigzag. So it's like one, two, three dashes, one, two, three, one, two, three goes back and forth. So that's what our final um, stitch is gonna be when we actually sew the binding, finish the last step. Um, for this process, we're, I'm going to be using two different feet, two different throat plates. Our first step is we have to get the binding strip onto our quilt. We're gonna sew it onto the back, flip it over to the front, and that's when we'll do our zigzag. Because of that, I'm gonna be sewing it on with my quarter inch foot, because I want a nice quarter inch. So I'm using my HP plate and my HP two foot. That is the AccuFeed Flex foot. It's the high performance foot, so it's gonna give me a perfect quarter inch with the walking foot, uh, walking the AccuFeed uh, ability with it. It makes attaching this so easy. This machine makes, every, it makes life so easy. Once we have the binding on, we flip it and we do the zigzag, we're going to switch some plates because this HP plate, it's a single whole throat plate. So we can't use that because you can't use a zigzag. So I'm just putting my regular throat plate on. It's the one that has the nice big gap because it, we're going to be doing the nice big zigzag. And I'm also going to switch to my A foot, which is the zigzag foot. So we'll do some switching in the middle. It's not hard. Um, I find that having all of the different feet that this machine comes with just makes life so much easier because you don't have to like, oh, I need to go get that one or I need to go get this one because it came with so many. So um, what else do we need to talk about? The binding, um, these are two and a half inch strips that I have pressed to the center. Um, I did connect them with a diagonal seam, like a bias seam. You can see that here. Uh, I always put one other color in my binding, it's just something I do. It always goes in the bottom right hand corner so I know how bind or quilt should hang. But um, I will show you how I attach these pieces together and then I just press them together. We're, we're just making a long binding strip. So um, I'm gonna bring you over here, show you my setup on the screen and um, you'll already see that my HP foot and plate are on because that's what I piece with and I've been doing a lot of piecing and we'll get right into the video. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you can see when other videos come out. Janome's always releasing some really great videos on how to use the machines, different features, and um, I know it's where I go to get a lot of my information. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified when the new videos drop. And go follow them on Facebook and Instagram, Janome USA. So I'm gonna bring you over here. All right, so here's some fake binding strips. These are all just strips that are cut to two and a half. Um, so to attach them, you could just put them together, you know, right sides together, sew that stitch, but you get a lot of bulk on that seam. So what most people do is that we're going to sew this at a diagonal. We're going to do like a bias stitch. So I'm going to take my first piece, lay it down um, horizontal. I'm going to bring my next piece and lay it on top of vertical. So... We're going right here. Now, there's a, you can draw a line from corner. We're going to stitch corner to corner. You can draw a line. You can do whatever you want. In my case, I usually just eyeball this because I don't do it a lot. And eyeballing is fine because I can hide anything that's a mistake in that binding. So let's bring our presser foot down. 
We're going to start at that corner. I am using this diagonal seam tape so I can see that the corner is right here. And as long as I keep that corner on the red line, I'm going to get a straight quarter inch stitch. Or not quarter inch stitch, but it'll go straight from corner to corner. So that would be my first piece. I take my next strip that's already sewn on, I just flip it. So now this is my horizontal piece, get my next one. If you want it to make it a little easier, just kind of eyeball like uh, an eighth of an inch and you'll get this intersection there if I do that at the top too. Um, you have these intersections, so now you're doing intersection to intersection. Uh, that does make it a little bit easier. I usually have with the fabric, so I have uh, my uh, salvages still on. I'm just going to bring this up to my needle, put my intersection there, intersection looks good at the top, and stitch. And when those are stitched, then I, gonna, I would snip this, I would trim this at a quarter inch, cut off any dog ear, oh, trim this to a quarter inch, um, cut off any dog ears if there were any, and then once I press this, I'd press that seam open. You had a perfect, a perfect uh, diagonal seam. Everything is going to uh, lay nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to break that really quick. We're going to pretend that that was. Um, that, that was trimmed. We'll just start in the center. How about that? And then I'm going to take it to my iron, fold it, and press it, and go all the way. And once you do that, you have a beautiful binding strip. So now when I'm attaching the binding to my quilt, you can't see this, but the binding, uh, my binding strips are just hanging out in my lap. I'm going to give myself a good, like, foot or so. And I'm going to bring my quilt top over. All right, so here's my quilt. This is the back. Remember, we're going to sew to the back and then flip to the front. And um, because I'm weird, I have my red part of my um, binding strip. And I want this to end, to end up around this corner. I don't know. I'm weird. It's something I do. So I'm just going to drop this here. And I'm just going to slide up my binding strip to see where we might want to start. And I'm just going to start in the center. So this is kind of at the center of the side. Um, what I want to make sure I have is like a foot because I'm going to end up stopping over here um, whenever I come back around and then we'll um, finish the pieces as needed. So let me throw a pin in here. I usually don't pin this. I do this very, very go with the flow. And this is where the HP two foot and the HP plate are fantastic because I'm just going to start sewing. Let's see, I'm aligning everything up. I am stitching with, uh, I'm going to do my this on at a two. So my stitch length is two, and it's just a straight stitch. It's just stitch number one. I'm going to pop that pin out so I don't hit it. And we'll start. I'll stitch a few stitches. I do back stitch this. You don't see me back stitch a lot, but this is a place I back stitch. And then we're just going to go through and manage this quilt a little bit. There we go. And just go through the motions of stitching this. I want to make sure the machine does most of the work. It's pulling the fabric through. I'm just making sure things lay straight and flow. And it doesn't get tricky until we get into this corner. You'll see I have these threads and stuff. I usually just leave them there. I'm going to fold this around so it's going to get wrapped up in there anyway. Let's turn my speed up. Much better. So we're coming to the end. Now, I love this foot. I need to get my stiletto. All right, I love this foot because of the markings on this foot. So right here, this is your quarter inch mark. So what I want to do is I want to stitch until this edge is right in line with my quarter inch mark. So I usually put my stiletto, I just drag it, and then when it falls down, I can feel that that's the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to drag, there just fell, I can feel the tabletop, and I'm going to stitch 
until I, my eyeball is right there and that's almost perfect. Back stitch a little bit. Cut my thread. And now that beginning piece is done. So now I want to miter my corners. So to do that, um, that's why we stopped here at a quarter. I'm going to flip this and angle it. So if this straight edge right here kept going, my whole binding would be straight. Do you see how we did that? Kind of like we how we attached those two binding pieces together. Now my binding folds back onto itself. I want to line up this outside edge. There we are. And if you have a clip or a magnet or something, this is a good time to use one just to hold things there because now I have to turn my quilt. This is the hardest part, managing your bulk, your quilt bulk. <laughs> there we are, oops, and there we go. So when I come on this edge, the nice thing is, let's see, there we go. I can start right at the edge, put my foot down, and stitch. I'm going to back stitch again, and we'll continue through our motions. So I'm going to continue through this. You can see right here, I have a beautiful mitered corner. And when I fold this over and turn it out, it's going to, everything's going to line up perfect. And I get just a perfect corner right here. Um, so yeah, that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to finish putting this border on or the uh, putting this binding on and I'll be back with to finish out this step and then to show you the zigzag process. So here we are at the end. I have my binding strip sewn on to here. This is where I started. So I have this nice big gap in here. So now we need to figure out where we want the um, bias, the join to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this and we're gonna try to get this all in. We'll do it this way. Oh, that kind of works. Okay, so I'm gonna open my tape. And my first thing is I'm just gonna snip some off. And because I know I'm not going to need this much, I'll pull over and I want to get maybe I'll go to all the way to the other strip. So I can see my other strip is there and we're just going to cut this. And then I'm going to do another piece because this is going to be my measuring piece. So we're going to put that away for now. So there we go. And now we're going to bring this one this way and I'll go about to where I did that one too. And there we go. So now I have my two pieces. This measuring piece, if I open it up, if I stick this here, this is gonna measure how far I need both of these strips to be cut to give me the perfect binding strip that matches right in the middle. So I sewed to here, sewed to here, so I'm gonna say that's the center. So I'm just gonna center this. And you can see the fold is perpendicular to our strip. And I'm going to cut the one of the strips on the left side of my fold. I'll put that down and we can flip these. So there I have my um, bottom strip down. I, the one I just cut, this is in line with it. I'm going to put this strip. It's hard to do this around the camera. The strip goes on top. And hey, that's almost perfect. I just have to trim off a little tiny bit. And I can lift this up and say, okay. I mean, this is an eighth of an inch. There you are. So these are cut and when I seam them together, it's gonna make the perfect edge. It's gonna just lay flat and beautiful. Now this part, um, I get wrong every time. So I'm gonna try to get right. So I want this piece to fold over and up so the top piece is going over and up and then the bottom piece is opening and being my vertical piece and go with the flow Adam I'm gonna line those edges up and go with the flow Adam you can pin this you can mark that line you can trim it you know you can do a lot of stuff go with the flow Adam is just gonna twist this 
and hope for the best. I was doing this one time and I sewed this together wrong so many times, I think it was five, that my mom just said, please stop, no more for today. <laughs> and my mom is very nice. There we are. I have this corner lined up on my red tape. There we go. I don't backstitch it, it's gonna be sewn down. And the moment of truth is when I bring you back here and I unfold my quilt and it folds together and that's gonna lay perfectly flat when I lay it down. Yay, I did it right, I was so worried. Um, so uh, we do need to trim this. And if you are like particular, you can, so I'm just gonna trim it with scissors because I have them here. And I'm just eyeballing a quarter inch a scant quarter inch. There we are. I will finger press it open. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. And now I can lay my batting flat or my quilt flat. It lays flat. I just make sure my finger press is staying finger pressed. There we are, there we are. And I can see where I stopped, so I'm just gonna start right there. And I try to get right, right on the stitches that I've already had. I love the openness of this foot. And we're gonna stitch. and I'll continue until I get to where I started. Back stitch. Oops, back stitch. And cut. And so now my binding is on, it's here. And when we go to the next step, we're gonna flip it over to the front and it's gonna look perfect because we're gonna zigzag stitch this. So um, this is where the step one is done. This is the, that was actually the hardest step. So now this is where I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna change my throat plate so I can lock myself out and pop my throat plate off. This is gonna be weird because I have my um, diagonal seam tape on that one. I'm also gonna be changing my bobbin, so I'll pop that out. Oops. There we are. So I'm putting in a bobbin to match. So this is just the regular throat plate with the nice big zigzag. I need to change my foot, and because it's the HP foot, I have to take my screw off and click this out. There we are. I'll put on my A foot. I love a machine where the feet are easy to interchange. Cause then you can't use, oh, well I had to change the foot so I didn't want to do it as an excuse. All right, so these go into my drawer. I can slide this back up. And now I have to change my bobbin, which I have to wind a bobbin. I'm going to be using this Omni thread today. This is a 40 weight variegated thread. It's a poly thread. Um, this is, it doesn't have the color number. It's 9130, but this will look really great and blend in, especially with a zigzag stitch because it's not like we're gonna hide it. It blends in with my fabric, but it also matches my quilt top as well. So it's gonna, it's going to just blend across the board, um, but we'll still be able to see it. So let me wind some bobbins and we'll be back here in a second. All right, so this is the screen to my uh, Continental M7. I'm gonna be using number 11, this zigzag stitch. And you can see that it's like three dash marks and then three dash marks. So it's um, the multi zigzag is the official name. We call it the triple stitch zigzag. So I'm gonna select that. And now you can see my settings. They are yellow because they've been changed and I've saved them in as one of my preferences on this stitch. Um, so 2.5 is gonna be my length and my width is seven. So it's gonna be seven millimeters from point to point. 
um, but then 2.5 from point to point. So we found that that was really nice. So that's what you want to set your machine up to. All right, just so we can see what this stitch is going to look like, I'm, this is just the binding strip that I cut off. So I'm just going to stitch some. And cut our thread. And then I'll show it to you. So this is what that zigzag stitch is going to look like. Um, definitely you can see it. Uh, I like using the variegated thread for this, um, but it's going to give it a lot of stability and most of the quilts that I use that I make are utility quilts. They go on the couch. We have dogs. They get washed every two weeks. So um, we're just, we're going to go for it. So um, we're going to start in a corner. Let me try to get this open. So here's my corner. This is the front of the quilt. You'll see all these extra threads and stuff. I usually just try to fold them into my binding. So when we stitched this on the back, you get some bulk. So right here, my bulk is on the left side of this. When I flip it, I need to think about, now my bulk is on the right because I'm looking at the mirror edge. So I'm gonna flip my binding around and I wanna create bulk on the front that is the opposite side of the bulk on the back. So if I have the bulk on the right here, I'm gonna fold my right side over first, and then I'm gonna fold my left side over. And that's adding the bulk, the extra fabric up here is on my left side. So like you're making, you're doing it opposite each other. And that's what we're looking for. We want, we want our uh, miter to go straight to the corner and these seams to add up, line up. So I am gonna use a clip here. Uh, I don't use a ton of clips on this, um, but I will use that one. What I love is a stiletto, something I can hold because I wanna fold this over. We can see this seam right here that is in the cream thread. That's my quarter inch seam, that's what I stitched with. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna to try to line everything up with that quarter inch seam. And I'm going to start up in the corner. The corners are the one thing that's weird. I mean, it is not perfect. This is not gonna be like, I just won a blue ribbon. And what it's gonna be is done. So let me see, I'm gonna hold that there and slide my fabric around because I have to continue to manage the rest of the quilt as I do this. And let's see. I'm gonna hold it with my stiletto. There we go. And I wanna start farthest to the left of my foot. Like I wanna be, I'm trying to be right on. Let's see, I want this there. That there. Oh, perfect. I want to try to get my first stitch right here, right in this intersection, um, but on my top fabric, because that's going to tack it down. So we're going to drop it right there. I love this foot for that, because we can see. There we are. So I'm going to take a few stitches, going slow. Let's see. I'll do my tie off. And now I'm going to back stitch. And so now, as I go, what I'm really paying attention to, let's see. is trying to get the needle to come back right near this edge. I don't want to go over this edge if I can help it. I'm just getting really close to it. Let me see if I can move you even closer. All right, so you can see my, you can see my cream line. That's what I'm folding up to. And I'm trying to keep my uh, needle cheating to the left, but I don't want to go over. sure my quilt top isn't getting stuck on anything as it moves. I'm 
fold, readjust. This is not, we're not winning a race. We're just trying to make this look as best we can. And just remember at the end of the day, this is faster than hand stitching it. So we've already beat that race. up a little bit we'll just go a little slower and I'll shift it over with my stiletto now that we get to the red you're really going to be able to see those stitches And this is, if I need to adjust things, I'll pick my foot up, readjust. So I'm getting up to the other edge. I'm gonna fold it just like this for now. When I get closer, I can finish and do the final uh, mitered corner. Got a weird pleat there. So when I get to the other mitered corner, I kind of do it backwards. So all my bulk, again, is going to be on the left side. So I'm going to do my left side first, and I'll fold that, come in and do the right, fold that, and since I'm right here, I will just hold this. I can use my stiletto, I can use my fingers. And I like to come in, I want to make sure that I'm stitching both sides. So I come almost to the edge. I'll do a back stitch. Cut it. And there's my zigzag stitch. So that's my zigzag on the front. Let me zoom out. There we go. So there's my zigzag on the front. It looks really nice. You're right up on the edge. And then on the back, because we lined it up on that line, this looks perfect. There's a few places, depending on how good your quarter inch is, mine's not always great, so you'll see the zigzag kind of swirl. This is when I lost control, but back when I was not losing control, it stays pretty, it stays pretty nice, it's, you can't see it there, but um, it gives a really nice look. I just love the finishing to it and the ease at it because it's just, doing a zigzag and my first thought was like well is that really stitched down there's a little lip I mean I could flick that but with all of these stitches in there it's not going anywhere so this can be laundered as much as I want for baby quilts this is a fantastic idea but think about if now that um, I use the zigzag you could use any of your decorative stitches and do the same thing so um, I'm gonna finish this up we'll see you back here in a minute all right, everyone, binding is on with my multi zigzag stitch. I love the way this looks. Ooh, a, a thread I have to trim. Um, I love the way this looks. I love how fast it goes. Again, the um, corners, a little weird. Um, I do try to match my thread a little bit so you can't see, but even on the red corner, it doesn't look too bad. Um, 
it actually looks kind of good. Some of the yellow corners could use a little bit of improvement, but um, again, I am new to this because I am new to doing binding. Uh, you saw my stack that has to get done. So each one I do, it just gets better and better. But this zigzag, it just makes stuff so great. So this is on my M7, it's, not, it's stitch number seven, but it's called the multi zigzag stitch. You're gonna look for the one that looks like a triple stitch. Um, stitch width is going to be seven. Stitch length is 2.5. I'm using my A foot, which is the zigzag foot, and it just, it goes on so quick. I'm excited. Now I get to go wash this. This I, We have all these little quilts that I use for um, my long arm stuff, for my long arm education videos, but um, then they go to the dogs, and the dogs love a warm quilt right out of the uh, washer and dryer, so I'm going to go get this washed so I can give it to the dogs, but don't forget to follow the Janome YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and you hit the bell so you see new videos that are posted. Like I said, they post a lot of great education. Um, go follow them on social media. It's Genomi USA on Instagram and Facebook. You can also follow me, Adam So Fun, with an S E W on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, just see some of the shenanigans I'm getting into. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one, everyone. Bye.